Hey guys, Warwick here from Yak Hunters. Uh, today I just wanted to run you through how to measure uh, larger fish uh, whilst on your kayak. So this could be kingfish or large flathead species, you know, up and around that 80, 80 centimetres mark up to a metre. Um, so first off, we'll just have a, a quick walkthrough of my kayak. Um, I'll show you the mat that I've uh, made up and I'll show you how I uh, measure these larger fish on a kayak out in the water. So I'm using a uh, native Titan 12 just in case you're curious of the actual kayak but um, I've got a Hobie Outback as well and I haven't found that there's any real difference between them so basically you want your net in an accessible position from your seat um, I use the Yak Attack net um, very good bit of gear gives you a lot of leverage to pull uh, bigger fish in and out of the water uh, obviously that'll be in your hand because you're trying to land the fish once you've got the fish in the net uh, the next thing I'll do is sort of pull out the brag mat uh, this is a little bit of uh, core flute that I made up. Um, I stuck one of the DPI stickers uh, to the base of it so that I've got a measurement down there in case uh, my brag mat is lost, damaged, stolen, whatever. But more to the point, it's got all the uh, feces, species uh, for all the different size and bag limits uh, for New South Wales. So that's quite handy to have on board. Um, anyway, I'll take out my brag mat and... Um, yeah, it, it just folds in half like that and I tuck it underneath some bungee cord at the front. Um, if I didn't have room on the front, I'd probably um, just put a bungee cord over the top of the esky or stick it in the back um, over there. So here's a quick mock-up of the board design and a few measurements just to get you started. So give it about 80 mil uh, wall thickness on the edges. So just start out, measure 80 mil down from the edge, 80 mil down from the edge, draw a nice straight line up. Same from the top, then measure 320 mil from that same edge you started on across, then another one at 80 mil out. Um, 620 long works out pretty good for the actual board length for my kayak. Um, you might want to go shorter or bigger depending on your brag mat length and so forth. And then the tail piece that folds is 540. It's also a tiny bit narrow at um, 300 wide. That's so after you've made the folds along these lines, um, this inside piece actually has clearance to fold up inside it nice and neatly. So just give it about um, 10 mils each side and that'll work out fairly nice. Once you've got it all marked out, just cut around your perimeter of the entire thing. All right? ignore the squiggly lines, it's just a little bit of extra that I've marked out there. Keep going round, round your perimeter, yep, cool. Once you've done that, you just need to give a little slit into this line here and this line here and that'll just allow you to fold that flap up, tuck it in, and then all I did was just put a little dollop of Loctite on there and then went over the top of that with a little bit of gaffer tape, electrical tape, whatever you got really, doesn't matter, but um, the Loctite will pretty well hold it once it's gone off. Um, the tape's just to hold it together um, whilst the glue's going off. If you've got some G-clamps or some other sort of clamp, that'd also work with a bit of timber each side. And yeah, that's that's pretty well it. Once it's finished uh, and dry, um, just drill a hole somewhere around here. And that's just so you can tie either a bit of bungee cord or, or put a carabiner or something on there just to secure your brag mat to the board so it doesn't float away when you're washing uh, fish slime and stuff off in the water. And having a carabiner on there is a great idea if you're going to fish in any of the um, tournaments or comps. Um, we usually use an ID tag and then you can attach that ID tag and it's on your board ready to go. Um, just as an extra bit of safety when I'm in the comps, I'll also write my tag. Uh, so it was red AO5 was my last competition number. I'll just write that on the brag mat as well, just in case for whatever reason the tag comes off or something. Um, I can remember what it is and I've got proof in the photos of what's going on. So guys, just going to show you uh, how I uh, land fish and then get a measure of uh, larger fish in the kayak. Um, again, you need your net to be at a nice easy distance to reach. So assuming that my hand I'm using to film would actually be holding my rod. Got the fish in. Um, it's up near the surface. Hopefully you haven't broken the surface, particularly if it's a flathead because they'll go nuts and flick off. Um, take your net, bring it overboard and you're going to scoop it. Um, I'm just using a bit of timber here today just to simulate the fish inside the brag mat obviously they're floppy um, but once it's up and in I'll get it down on the top there um, I haven't lost any fish just sitting the net down in the top there the, the net wraps around the fish too much and stops it from getting out um, once I've got it to that stage I'll start to um, you know get the hook out of it and so forth you know it helps if you're set up with like 
pliers and everything all nice and close and ready to go. So assuming, you know, dug around, got the hook out, you might need to handle the fish, maybe not. Um, once you've got the, the hook out of the fish, if it was a particularly good fish, um, you might consider putting a set of uh, lip grips into the fish and connecting it, you know, around your wrist. Um, but I'd only do that if it was a PB. I don't think it's particularly good for the fish. Anyway, once I've got it into that position, I'll, um, I'll grab the net. Usually I'd have two hands free to do this, but ultimately I'd take the fish out of the net. And, you know, it's nice and easy to do whilst I'm on a nice firm surface. It is more difficult on the water, but certainly not impossible. Um, and then the next thing is to sort of shuffle your net to a spot where it's out of the way good enough. Grab your brag mat, so that needs to be easily accessible. At this stage, I'd just lie the fish down, um, you know, somewhere in and around near my feet. You know, there's, there's plenty of room in here, even if it's kicking around and the tail sort of leaning up against the edge of my chair, or maybe you, you've got the tail at this front edge here. It doesn't really make a difference. It's too much of a height for the fish to actually jump out of. Um, yeah, so grab your bag, brag mat, sit it up um, across your lap, like so. Open my brag mat up. And then I just reposition my hands, you know, reach in, grab the fish, get the fish up, get the fish on top of the brag mat, sit it down there, keeping one hand on top of the fish. Because the brag mat's um, nice and rigid, um, it, you know, it's it's not flexing and falling all over the shop, and it doesn't flex and fall all over the shop, even with larger heavy fish. You know, I've had 80 centimetre dewfish sitting on my lap like this, and it's just not a problem. Get your fish up into position. If it's kicking and carrying on a lot, I would suggest um, just getting a, um, a hand towel, wetting it down, and you just place it across the fish's belly, and just that little bit of uh, weight and moisture will definitely settle the fish down. Um, and then, voila, yes, you can get it into a position, bring your camera up nice and high, and uh, get a couple of happy snaps there. Um, if you're not sure if your camera is getting the right angle and so forth on there, just flip the view on your camera so that you've got it um, using the, the forward camera, and then you can look at the screen whilst even whilst you've got potentially a hand on your fish. Um, you know, you can definitely uh, get your camera into a position whereby you can see the fish. Um, takes a little bit of getting used to, but you know, you can get a full picture of your fish on the brag mat on the board, and then even quickly take your hand off for a, a nicer, better photo. And you know, you can always adjust the, the photo at a later stage. Um, failing that, I um, have in the past uh, moved my brag mat. Um, yeah, I've moved my brag mat um, up and onto the back of my esky. Um, and then I can turn around and, you know, quite comfortably uh, kneel on my chair. You know, you, you take your fish, get it back up on there. Limitation of this is the back end does fall away a little bit. However, fish aren't rigid like this board. They'll usually just flow down and, and have a little bit of, of softness there. Again, you know, you're keeping your hand on there. You've got everything as secure as you possibly can. Um, if you need to, just move the back of your chair out the way so you can get a nice, nice photo of it. And then um, after I've got a couple of quick snaps, I'll actually just lift the board up nice and straight and try and get a, a good photo, something along those lines there. And, you know, I mean, this would measure, if I was in a, a comp trying to get a real good photo of it, I'd be taking a photo, something like that, and that'd be 88 odd centimetres. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed, guys. Hope to give you a few ideas on uh, how you can... Uh, potentially measure some of these larger fish on your kayak. Yes, I know they're lively. If you had a, a set of fish grips, um, you could even anchor them again back to a nice, easy carabiner there. Um, so, yeah, you've got options out there, but it's a shame if you don't get a measure on a trophy fish um, because, you know, you may not have been set up. One last way that you can do it, it's not, um, not quite as neat, I don't think, but it certainly works for a lot of fish um, at a size. Hey guys, Warwick here. Yeah, another way you could um, definitely uh, measure your fish would just be to um, take a brag mat, um, roll it out. I'd probably put the nose of the brag mat oops, sorry about that, um, just down as close as you can towards you. This brag mat is really wide. If you had a, a more narrow brag mat, you'd probably find it easier to do. But um, you know, if your brag mat is like that and you've got a fish sitting up, you know, on the nose here, 
uh, even though there is an uphill bit across here, fish bend, um, you know, you're talking, you'd need a, a fish longer than 80 centimetres to not get a reasonable idea of, of how long that actually was. This is probably, I probably wouldn't bother trying to measure anything over probably um, about 60 centimetres. Um, you know, the tail of fishes are, are really, um, the last 100 mil of a 60 centimetre fish is always going to be um, quite uh, flexible. Um, but um, yeah, you know, use use what you've got on board to give you an assist. Um, but I'd strongly recommend um, just a, a firm backing, some sort of a board or structure. That core flute is lightweight. It's really cheap. I think it's about, I don't know, maybe a couple of bucks for a sheet that'll, that'll do this size job. Um, and it, it, it'd take you literally half an hour to, to knock up if you've got the glue and a knife and a straight edge and a, and a texture ready to go. Um, yeah, it's just not that hard. Anyway, good luck with everything, guys. Um, tight lines, and we'll catch you next time.